It's no secret that the trails in Quebec are some of the best anywhere. And when you ride here, it's easy to see how that reputation has come about. Now, over the years, I've ridden in plenty different regions across this province, but the abitibi Timiskaming region is one place that I've never been. Yeah, so I've ridden kind of all over anywhere there's snow and really I've, I've ridden a lot of places throughout Quebec as well and I've had that privilege, but never this area. And a lot of the buddies that I've got that uh, I might ride with around home, a lot of them come up to the Val d'Or area, Abitibi, Temiskaming, and ride from here. And for years they've been telling me how great it is to come here and never, for circumstance, never had a chance to come. And this was really my first chance to be in this region of Quebec and it's been absolutely outstanding. So we got a little bit of a late start in the trail side of things, getting from Val d'Or at the, the Lescal Hotel and Suites down uh, to Sanitaire for lunch and then across the Balbazard Sauvage. Um, it was definitely an interesting experience. I mean, one thing I will say about the trails, they were always top notch. The signage was absolutely amazing. The trails were at least two grimmers wide, it felt like at all times. Um, and you could really follow the signs, know exactly how far you're going to be, almost in five kilometer increments to some destinations. And you could judge uh, the corner speed and entry speed purely based on the number of red arrows they had in the corner. If there was no red arrows, you could probably carry your momentum through the corner. If you had one, you had to brake check a little bit. And then two and three meant really put the binders on and, and get that puppy turn around. But it was definitely a fun and exciting experience. And the one thing I will add is because we had a late start at the beginning of the trip, we started riding into the night and the lack of traffic on the trails at night and the fact that you can see that headlight coming the other way, you could really open it up a little bit more on, on the trail system out here. Um, the other thing that I will add to that as well is when you did stop and shut all the headlights off, it was mind blowing the amount of stars and, and the wilderness you could see and enjoy the, the night experience out here because you really are in the wilderness between destinations and it's quite a unique feeling of being in the middle of, of that, this destination. So a lot of the guys that had experience here that I'd ride with again back at home that were telling me, you gotta come, you gotta come, you gotta come up here. Um, each one of them said that, you know, the trails are really second to none. Uh, accommodations are fabulous. The food is, you're gonna roll away from the table every night. And uh, the snow conditions are again, second to none. And really they were right on all fronts. Um, the trails being groomed as wide as they were, uh, as flat as they were, were absolutely outstanding to ride. And we made the transition from leaving Val d'Or late in the day and we rode in through the evening to arrive here at uh, the Balbazar uh, Sauvage at about 10 o'clock at night. But that experience was, was great to have that part of the day's ride. Um, perfect trail conditions the whole way and 270 kilometers and you know really have no bumps to speak of. Uh, that's saying something about how, how well the trails are groomed and the pride that the clubs here take in, uh, in maintaining those trails. Based on the, the experience that was set for me riding here in the past, uh, this ride lived up to everything I expected from this region. I mean, you could probably count on one hand the number of bumps we hit between Valdor and the Balbazard, and that just speaks to in and of itself. When you're doing a 270 kilometer ride, you expect to at least run into a couple of rough trails going between clubs in different districts where they didn't groom at the same time. And that's just simply not the case out here. I mean, the trails are always top notch and the experience is second to none. Uh, there was no fear of, of running out of gas between the destinations. There's plenty of fuel stops along the way. Um, and just overall a very great experience out in Abitibi Temiskaming. I don't think I've ever been through uh, a traffic light on a snowmobile before. Um, I've been through traffic lights that, you know, you're sitting next to a car going through a traffic light. I've done that before, but this traffic light back in Val d'Or was specifically for a snowmobile. You had a button you had to push and the light would go green for you, the traffic would stop, you'd cross the road and you're on your way again. So that was kind of a neat experience. Again, it, it shows the level of commitment from uh, not only the, the, the people who are building the trail system, but the towns in the region to the snowmobile industry. It really shows that they want you here and they're inviting you here and they want you to have the best snowmobiling experience possible. Getting back to the Balbazard, um, coming in here, it really is five-star snowmobiling experience. I mean, it is a log cabin. Um, it's, it's a paradise. You walk in, you're walk, treated to a six-course meal to, to celebrate your day. So, I mean, 
Um, and then the staff lives on site, so you have the same people serving you and getting to know you if you stay here for more than one day and more than one meal. And it, it just creates a really f family friendly, I would say, and you feel like you're part of a bigger family just coming here and that it's just all snowmobilers getting along, having a great time, and just enjoying a log cabin in the middle of the middle of this beautiful region that you really don't get to experience in many other provinces. So. There's been something I've been trying to avoid my whole life, and that's buying a set of Crocs. But here at the Balbazard, they provide them. And I gotta tell you, these things are amazing. The four buggies that we brought with us, I think, on the trail side of things, we, we really hit the nail on the head. Uh, the XTX was built for these trails. Yeah, it's a longer track sled. We've got studs in it. It does have a lot of traction in the uh, in the track area, but on the trail, uh, you know, you could you could hustle that puppy down the trail. It was a lot of fun. And then once you got kind of anything up to temperature, it would belch flame out the side of it. it was just that just has got to be a good thing when you're bel belching flame out of the side of your snowmobile at the exhaust. Um, the other uh, sleds we brought, the 850 MXZRS was absolutely outstanding on the trails. Uh, the Polaris Assault, again, a, a little bit more tippy because it's sort of that crossover type of sled, but it still worked phenomenally. And then of course we had the, uh, the Titanic with us, the Polaris Titan, hauling all the gear. Uh, we had a two overnight stay, so all of our extra socks and underwear had to be packed somewhere and the, the Titan hauled it all here in, uh, in speed and style. So we really, I think, for the trail side of things, we probably could have, couldn't have done much better with the sleds that we brought. When you transfer those sleds to the off-trail experience, uh, we probably sh were a little bit uh, undergunned, I think you could say, for what we were in for. We came a little underprepared, I would say. I mean, I thought we were prepared. We had, uh, you know, essentially cross over snowmobiles. Um, a Sidewinder with a 141 inch track, an Assault with a 144, which is probably our best sled, and uh, the Titan with a 155, but then when your guides for the day pull out four summits with uh, three inch lugs and 163 inch tracks, you start to question your decisions a little bit, but uh, no, it was, definitely, it was definitely still an awesome experience. Daniel and the guides, they said the night before we were in for our off-trail adventure that they were all going to be riding summits and uh, they were going to give us a summit so that the Titan can stay behind and not, uh, not have to wheel that thing through, uh, through some of the tight trails that we were in for. But still didn't really expect the type of snow that, uh, and the depth of snowpack that we were headed for. Um, we rode out of the Balbazard for about 5k to our first, uh, first logging road and at that point we were still in the, uh, in the, uh, the fire zone that came through here a number of years. So uh, it, the snow was deep but it wasn't crazy yet. And it was you know, totally doable. Uh, the MXZRS was having a good time. You know, it could get through that. But as our day progressed, it was, it was becoming more and more clear that the sleds that we brought with us were, were gonna have a, a more and more difficult time getting through. We got them through, but it was a team effort to get all of our, our stuff through these trails when you're following other guys with uh, summits and they're having absolutely no problem getting through stuff and they're climbing and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff and you're kind of sitting there on an MXZ looking up going, yeah, I'm not doing that. You're just, you're just praying that you can get through after they pound the trail down so you've got a hole essentially in the snow that you could drive through. Well, I know this area sets the expectations and standards really high for trail quality, prep, um, signage, everything along those lines. The one thing I wasn't prepared for and was blown away by, uh, this is the first time I got to experience the off-trail side of things. And uh, needless to say, it was an absolutely amazing experience. 